The Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan and Fred McMurray as George. Together in a gay, new, exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. Got bills to pay? Pay them. Got things to buy? Buy them. Want cash to do it? Then call Beneficial Finance and get that big okay. Get that big okay at Beneficial. Get that big okay for cash today. Just pick up your phone and make a call for cash. The Beneficial way, it's the smart way. The right way to when you want cash. Here's the thing to do. Get that big okay at Beneficial. You pick the terms, you pick the payments. Get that big okay. Beneficial Finance Company. It's the Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan Armstrong, owner and editor of the Hillsdale Morning Star, and Fred McMurray as George Harley, the paper's ace reporter. Well, today is one of those slow days at the newspaper office, and George, being George, is not helping things out at all. Susan. Well, it's about time, George. Got anything for us? We're short three columns. No, not a thing. George. No, just run blank spaces, and that's the best kind of news these days, anyhow. You just don't wait for things to happen, George. News is people. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a story. You just have to look. Both well. If you'd ever got out of this ivory tower of yours here, Susan... Listen, if I chose, I could very possibly get a story out of the next person to come through that door. Oh, Susan, sure. very possible. Don't stand there looking so smug, George. If I really wanted to... Oh, um, excuse me, I, I'm looking for the office where you place water. Uh, well, that's the second door down, and two... Uh, not so fast, Susan. Uh, come in, sir, come in. Why, uh, uh, George... Uh, you don't mind helping us with a little argument, do you, Mr., uh... uh... It's too good. Uh, Virgil, too good. Uh-huh. Well, Miss Armstrong and I were just having a friendly little debate, Mr. Too Good. Miss Armstrong claims that everyone has a story worthy of the front page of our newspaper. Well, I just came here to the place of one time. Uh -huh. Well, I'm sure we don't want to detain you, Mr. Too Good. And you're most likely a very busy man. Well, I'm retired. Oh. oh. Uh -huh. uh, retired from an interesting occupation, I suppose. Uh, explorer, mountain climber. <laughs> a bookkeeper. Oh, really, George? Uh, perhaps you have an exceptional family, Mr. Too Good. Uh, Twenty children? Forty grandchildren? I'm a bachelor. Well, that settles that. <laughs> Sorry to let you down, Miss Armstrong. Well, in every argument, somebody wins, somebody loses. Right, Susan? <laughs> but if I find Adelaide, Miss Armstrong, I'll come back and let you know. Uh, Adelaide? Uh, who's, who's Adelaide? Yes, uh, who's Adelaide, Mr. Cooper? Well, she's the reason I'm placing the ad to, to try and locate her. I have a drawing I made of her. I thought I might run that, too, if it doesn't cost too much. Oh, could I see it, please? Oh, well, certainly, Miss Armstrong. Here you are. Well, she... She's very beautiful, Mr. Tudor. Let's see, Susan. Well. <laughs> but I guess I've been in love with that lady all my life. Oh, she looks very young. You, you made this drawing some time ago. Well, not too long ago. And that's how I remember her. But she would have changed since then. Well, that's one thing about childhood sweethearts. They never really change. And you haven't seen her uh, since she looked like this? No. And Mr. Toogood, don't bother about our want ad department. We're going to run your story and Adelaide's picture on the front page. Yeah. Yeah, Virgil Toogood seeks childhood sweetheart. Why, that's very kind of you. But do you think people would be interested, Miss Interested? Of course they'd be interested. This is a great human interest story. 
Well, I'll spread it all over the country. I'll... Uh, George. Huh? Uh... Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Susan, you, you, you deserve a great deal of credit for helping me think of this. Paper, more than paper, Hillsdale man seeks long lost sweetheart. Extra, search for childhood sweetheart, spreads over nation. Extra. Extra paper, Adelaide reported in Alaska, Alabama, and Australia. Extra, extra. Has anybody here seen Adelaide? <laughs> this morning, Payton? Yes, Miss Susan, but I thought I'd let you get breakfast out of the way. There's hardly room for both. We hear all about Adelaide as usual. All about Adelaide. Look. Dear. And there's bound to be twice this many down at the office. Well, here, you help me open some of them. Glad to. They make very choice readings. Listen to this. A radio program wants Virgil and Adelaide when found as contestants. What? Guarantees them a house, furniture, dishes, honeymoon in Hawaii. Look, here's one offering Virgil and Adelaide six weeks at the palace in New York. But reply immediately because they're stalling off a seal act. (laughs) Look, some magazine wants to serialize the true story of Virgil and Adelaide, America's most popular couple. And they want Adelaide found at once because the story's already written. Oh, dear. When are they going to locate Adelaide, Miss Susan? Mm, I wish I knew. The whole thing's getting a little frightening. Well, with the proper persuasion, I could change my name. Yes, but how about Adelaide's picture? Let me look at her again. Hmm. Maybe I'd better wire the palace, see if they have an (laughs) opening in the (laughs) sea light. Mr. Harvey. Oh, morning, Sammy. Sit down. Join me in a spot of breakfast. Don't mind if I do. On you, Mr. Harvey. Dreamer. Just thought I'd ask. Uh, been up to the office yet, Sammy? Sure. Six more women are there claiming to be Adelaide. You think you'll ever find her, Mr. Harvey, do you? Anything else, Mr. Harvey? Morning, Sammy. Hi, Grace. Uh, what about you, Grace? Do you think Virgil is ever going to find Adelaide? Mm-hmm. I've seen a picture, Mr. Harvey. Young, very pretty. That's the way he remembers her. Yeah, that was years ago, of course. <laughs> but if he ever finds her, she isn't going to look that way, not anymore. You mean you hope he doesn't find her, Grace? Oh, he never will. One way or another, he never will. Sorry to be so pessimistic, boys, but this is one of those mornings when my feet hurt. I'll get your menu, Sammy. What do you think, Mr. Harvey? I don't know, Sammy. Well, I guess I better get up to the office. Six women there, you said, huh? You know, when I was there, yes. There might be six more by now. Yeah. Sammy, if Virgil doesn't find her soon, we're going to be up to our necks in Adelaide. You wanted me, Susan? Oh, George, is Virgil here yet? No, not yet. He said he'd be in this morning, though. Uh, George, I've been thinking. You know, we built this story up to pretty big proportions. (laughs) It was nothing, really. You help, of course. Thank you. But has it struck you that Virgil has been very vague about details? We've been sponsoring something that's of national interest, and, and uh, we're going to look awfully silly if it's... Well, if it's... Uh, what? Well, I just think that we ought to know a lot more facts about where we're going, that's all. Well, don't give it a thought, Susan. When Virgil comes in this morning, I'll pin him down. Leave it to me. I'll just... Yes, come in. Oh, good morning, Miss Armstrong. Mr. Harvey. <laughs> How are you, Virgil? Uh, come in and sit down, Mr. Toogood. Uh, thank you. Uh, any luck? Well, nothing definite. Uh, Mr. Toogood. Yes? Um, I, I was just discussing with Mr. Harvey. Um, uh, perhaps it would help us if, if you could fill in a few more details about Adelaide. Oh, of course. Like, uh, what does she do? Uh, did she have a job when you knew her? Was she going to school or, or what? Well, I generally pictured her as being on stage. Uh, most of the time I did. Mm, drama or musical comedy? Well, you know, I hadn't really thought about that, Mr. Mr. Harvey. Too good. You say you pictured Adelaide? You almost talk as though you never even knew her. Oh, I never claimed to have actually known her, Miss Armstrong. You... Uh, I was never that lucky. But, uh, you, you saw her. Oh, of course. I see her all the time. Well, I can close my eyes. 
And I can see her right now. Hold your off. But, but, Susan, Mr. you take it. Mr. Toogood, Virgil, Adelaide doesn't actually exist then, except in your mind. Well, she exists, Miss Armstrong. I know she does. I've been in love with her all my life. And she loves me. And just because I've never actually seen her doesn't mean that she doesn't exist. Uh, somewhere. <laughs> doesn't? You, uh, you didn't have a model for that picture you drew? Well, of course I did, Mr. Harvey. Adelaide. Adelaide. But you should have told us, Mr. Joe. We've given this a lot of publicity, and in a sense, we can be held responsible. Well, you wouldn't have helped me if I had told you? <laughs> well, then I'm glad I didn't. Virgil. And you can give up looking for her if you want her, Miss Armstrong and Mr. Harvey. But I never will. And I'll find her. Well, what do we do now? I, I was against this whole idea from the beginning, Susan. If you remember, I oh, warned I remember you that... I remember is that we've started a nationwide search for someone who doesn't exist. Now, how do we get out of it? Well, we might go into some other business, like a meat market. Oh, you're a big help, George. And get your thumb off the scale. I had an instinct against Virgil from the beginning. Dishonest earlobes. And if you'd listen to me, Susan, no oh. mood for games, Sammy. A telegram just came. I opened it. Guess what? I mean, oh, you do the, the... Adelaide, she's been found. What? A paper in New York found her. They say there's no doubt whatever about her being Adelaide. And they're putting her on a plane for Hillsdale tonight. Collect. Adelaide or the telegram? Both. Well, George, what do we do now? Well, I, I guess we'd better go out and meet the plane. <laughs> there are times, George, when you're positively brilliant. <laughs> find out if the plane's on time, George. Yeah, they said it should be here any minute, huh? Susan, do you think we did the right thing not telling Virgil? Well, of course. We want to be sure what kind of person she is first. Yeah, don't but we? I don't know what difference it makes. If it's Adelaide, he loves her. I wonder how they were so sure in New York that she is Adelaide. <laughs> I think she had a picture of herself when she was young, and it matches Virgil's drawing of his imaginary sweetheart. Yes, I guess so. It's kind of exciting at that, isn't it, George? The girl he only dreamed of, and now she's come true. Well, well, hardly a girl, Susan. I hope she likes the shawl we brought her and the candy. I hope you didn't get hard candy, George. You know how these were people at age. Mm, all soft candies. Nothing but chocolate cream. Well, here comes the plane, Susan. I just know she's going to turn out to be an old dear. This is probably her first plane trip. Maybe we should have brought Virgil along after all. Yes, maybe we should, George. Have you got a picture there? I want to see if she looks anything like she used to. Uh, here, Susan. And you'll soon find out. Uh, let's go off and meet her. Right with you, George. Susan, look. Look? Oh, that must be the stewardess, George. That couldn't be... be... That could be Adelaide. Virgil hit the jackpot. Look at Adelaide. Hi, are you two supposed to be meeting me? Uh, yes, we... Where's but... Virgil? Oh, well, 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 but you look exactly like the picture. Exactly. Well, what's the matter? I'm not supposed to look that way. How else did they know I was Adelaide? Well, it's just that we expected a... Well, we, we expected we... what? Why all the surprise? Adelaide, you, you think we're surprised? Just, just wait till we tell Virgil. <laughs> This is Sherry Lewis. You know, they say seeing is believing, but you can't always believe everything you see, for you may not be seeing all there is to see. The ability to read distant signs and charts only indicates that one has the ability to read distant signs and charts. Good sight depends on many other visual skills as well. Vision defects can be a particular problem with children because changes in vision occur so gradually that they may not be aware of them. In fact, studies indicate Four out of ten school children are handicapped by visual defects. I recently took my preschool daughter for her first annual vision exam. She loved it. Obviously, a vision exam doesn't hurt. And she had such fun exploring the optometrist's office. And I had fun hearing that her eyes were up to par, especially since 80% of learning is seeing. Why don't you give your youngsters the opportunity to learn as much as possible? Have their eyes and yours professionally examined at least once a year. The American Optometric Association recommends it.
And now back to our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, in the second act of our story. When a girl who has existed only in the imagination of Virgil Tuga turns up in the flesh, that's one thing. When she turns out to be some 40 years younger than Susan and George supposed she would be, that's another. Right now, George is getting expert help on the problem. Was that late now, Mr. Harvey? Well, she's over at Miss Armstrong's house, Sammy. Have you told Mr. Too good about her yet? Well, no, not yet. I'm supposed to bring him over this evening. Well, if you want someone to take Adelaide off his hands, Mr. Harvey, I'm available. <laughs> Go away, Sammy. Well, what's her attitude about the whole thing, uh, Adelaide? Well, as near as I can figure out, she's under the impression that she won a contest of some kind. She, uh, she doesn't seem too bright. Does she look like her picture? Exactly. <laughs> Who needs to be bright? Nevertheless, Sammy, it should be obvious even to you that Virgil and Adelaide are not the perfect couple. Oh, you'll figure a way out of it, Mr. Harvey. Thank you, Sammy. Of course, it will be the wrong way, but at least it'll be your own. Your confidence touches me. And if it doesn't work out with Virgil, Mr. Harvey, uh, put in a word for me, huh? Oh, I will, Sammy, I will. And I know just the word. Oh, I doubt I get very far with Adelaide. <laughs> Virgil. Yes, Mr. Harvey? Virgil, there's something I feel I ought to explain to you, or, or try to, before we get where we're going. Uh, well, where are you taking me, Mr. Harvey? Uh, to Miss Armstrong's house, Virgil. You see... Uh, I don't think I've had the chance to thank both of you, Mr. Harvey, for what you've been doing for me. Well, it's nothing, Virgil, nothing. But, uh... I, I just can't get over it. People from all over the country... They're actually interested in me. They're my friends. Yes. Uh, Virgil, about Adelaide... Uh... Mr. Harvey, somehow I feel very close to her. I feel that I'm going to find her. Uh-huh. Uh, Virgil, did you ever consider that Adelaide might not be exactly as you thought of her all these years? She will be, Mr. Harvey. I know exactly how she'll look, what she'll say. I couldn't be mistaken. I've thought about her too long to be mistaken. Well, uh, here we are at Miss Armstrong's house, Virgil. I feel that I'm getting closer to Adelaide all the time. Virgil, uh, maybe you'd better wait outside uh, just a minute. Do you mind? After you've waited as many years as I have, Mr. Harvey, you don't mind a few more minutes. Well, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, poor Virgil. <laughs> Any sign of George yet, patient? Not yet. Adelaide getting impatient. I told her Virgil was coming and it would be quite a surprise. Huh. That's a pretty safe statement. Going to be an awful shock to poor Virgil, too. His dream girl. I just hope he doesn't... Oh, sounds like the door. Susan. Where's Virgil, George? Well, I left him outside in the porch. I thought I might uh, prepare the ground with Adelaide before I brought him in. She's right in there, George. I just wish you luck. Well, yeah, thanks, Susan. And as soon as I've made things perfectly clear to Adelaide, you can bring in Virgil. <laughs> Maybe I'd better fix Virgil a box lunch, Mr. Harvey. He might have a long wait. Well, here goes. Uh, <clears throat> Adelaide? Oh, it's you. Come on in. Adelaide, I'm uh, here to explain a few things to you. You, well, you see, uh, about time somebody explains something. All I got so far is mystery, uh, like a second well, half of a double feature. You see, it's Adelaide. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. You um like my dress? Dress? Oh, very pretty. Uh, what there is of it. <laughs> uh, you see, Adelaide. Uh, you said that. Oh. Uh, what I wanted to say is. I'm afraid you're in for a little surprise about uh, Virgil, I mean. Oh, uh, everybody tells me I'm in for a surprise. He's not what I think he is? Well, not exactly. No. Uh, <sighs> Gee, the only reason my boyfriend let me come is I told him the publicity would be good for my career. Uh, I enter beauty contests. And that Harry, that's my boyfriend, well, he didn't need to be jealous because Virgil's old enough to be my grandfather. You mean he isn't? Well, I didn't exactly say that. I... No. No what? You're Virgil. Me? Oh, now, now, wait a minute, Adelaide. I... That's why 
Why, everybody kept saying it was going to be a surprise. Why, Virgil, you're... No, no, wait, Adelaide, restrain yourself. Think oh. of Harry. And you're noble, too. Imagine you thinking of Harry when you're face to face with your dream girl. But I... But oh, you were... But Virgil! Well, I'll, I'll be right back, Adelaide. I... Well, did you prepare the ground for Virgil, George? Virgil? Susan, would, would you go out and explain to Virgil that I, uh, well, I had a sudden attack of the, well, I've had an attack, and I'll, uh, I'll talk to I him later. Why should I do right? that, George? Well, Why should I tell Virgil a lie? Well, Susan, what makes you think it's a lie? <laughs> Miss Armstrong in, Sammy. In our office, Mr. Harvey. Well, I'm going in there right now and straighten this whole thing out. She seems to hold me responsible for this whole ridiculous situation, Sammy. Can you imagine that? Sure. Well, I'm not going to stand for it. I'm going in there and then... Uh, uh, how does she seem today? Not too happy today, Mr. Harvey. About you and Adelaide. I was strictly not at fault. And whether Susan likes it or not, I'm going to tell her point blank what actually... Uh, you... You think she might be in a better mood after lunch? Women just don't understand these things, Mr. Harvey. You are so right, Sammy. I know you weren't to blame. No, thanks. Forgive him, Miss Armstrong, I said. Forgive him. You did? It was just that when he saw Adelaide, it was bigger than both of them. Oh, fine. It's a very interesting situation, Mr. Harvey. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Now, if you figure you and Adelaide and Miss Armstrong, it's a triangle. Sammy. Taking in Virgil, it's a rectangle. I don't care. But including to... Harry, it's a pentagon. Including... Who? Harry, Adelaide's boyfriend. He followed her here from New York. Uh, he was here earlier this morning. Well, where did he go? Over to Miss Armstrong's house to see Adelaide. I imagine they're having a friendly chat even now. Yes, I imagine. Uh, a little fellow, huh? A weightlifter. Well, I was just hoping. But don't worry, Mr. Harvey. I'm sure you can explain everything before it's too late. Uh, Sammy. Is this him, kid? Boyjul? I didn't expect you back so soon. Uh... Uh, Mr. Harvey, this is Harry. Well, uh, nice to see you, Harry. <laughs> uh, you fit the description all right. You got anything to say before... Uh, before what? Before I fix it so you don't get any more innocent girls here from New York on phony pretenses. Boy, Joe. No, no, no. Now, wait, Harry. In the first place, I'm not... Uh... Well, you tell him, Sammy. Don't blame Mr. Harvey. No. It was bigger than both of them. That's right. Uh, no. I could stand in or sit in. Uh, oh, no, wait. Uh, Sammy, uh, Sammy, go get Miss Armstrong. She can explain. Sure, Mr. Harvey. Uh, this whole thing is just a case of mistaken identity, Harry. Uh, nothing to get angry about at all, you see. I... Oh, you wanted to see me, Joe? I certainly did. Uh, uh, Susan, this is Harry. He's here from New York. He's, he's a friend of Adelaide's. Uh, would you explain to him that I have not been carrying on with Adelaide? Um, uh... And may I ask you a question, Mr. Uh, Cronk. Uh, Harry Cronk. Mr. Cronk, do you have any plans concerning Adelaide? I sure do. As soon as I finish with Hot Throb here, I'm going to drag her back to New York. But if I told you that she's not been carrying on with uh, Hot Throb here... Well, I, uh, I might let her stick around a while, I, I guess. Oh, I see. Susan, what are you waiting for? Tell him the truth. I'm really sorry, George. And this is going to hurt me more than it does you, uh, almost. Susan. Uh, Mr. Cronk, it was... Well, it was just bigger than both of them. What? Ah, uh, so am I. Hey, Harry, now wait. Oh, oh poor George. Don't give him any pity, miss. His kind ain't worth it. <laughs> He's coming around, Miss Armstrong. You can't kill Mr. Harvey. But it was an awfully good try, Sammy. Feeling better, George? Huh. Why did you do it to me, Susan? Oh, I'm sorry, George. Really. Hmm. But the whole thing with Adelaide and Virgil was getting so complicated. And, and if this was a way of getting her out of town... Well, there must have been an easier way. Oh, does it hurt very much, George? No, uh, just numb. But uh, what do we do about Virgil? Well, I guess we ought to tell him his dream girl's leaving town. Give him a chance to see her anyway. You really think so? Well, he's apt to find out from someone else that she's been here, George. Yeah, he might at that. And we just can't have him chasing a dream that doesn't exist for the rest of his life. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, have you got any idea where he is? I saw him at the lunch counter a while ago. He was talking to Grace. Shall we go, George? 
Can you walk? If I can, Susan, it's through no fault of yours. Oh, poor, poor George. You see him, George? Virgil? No, I don't. Oh, yeah, there he is, in that back booth. Could we speak to you a minute, Virgil? Oh, Miss Armstrong and Mr. Harvey. Hello, Virgil. <laughs> uh, you know Grace? How are you, Miss Armstrong? Fine, Grace. Oh, did something happen to you, Mr. Harvey? No, 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 nothing of importance, nothing at all. Uh, Virgil, about Adelaide. I want to thank you for that, Miss Armstrong. You see, it was through the story in your paper that I found her. You, you found her? Yeah, I certainly did. Oh, but how? Well, we just got to talking about the story, that's all. And, of course, I recognized her from the picture. Oh. Uh, but did you know she was leaving town? Yeah. Leaving town? Well, I don't think so, Mr. Harvey. Are you, Grace? 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 Oh, tell him, Miss Armstrong. Will you tell him that I'm not pretty and I never was? And I'm not at all like the picture he's carried around in his mind for so long. Will you tell me? Yes, but you are. You're exactly like him. Oh. I'll leave it up to Miss Armstrong and Mr. Harvey. Isn't this Adelaide? It, it certainly is, Virgil. It certainly is. George? Hmm? Well, yes, yes. You can stop looking, Virgil. You can stop looking right now. You found her. cash to clean up bills, buy things, make home improvements, you name it, just call Beneficial Finance. You pick the terms, you pick the payments. So call Beneficial and get that big okay. Beneficial Finance Company. You know, Susan, you were so right. About what, George? Well, everyone has a story. All you have to do is look for it. Oh. Well, they did make a sweet couple, didn't they? Virgil and Grace. Yeah. I'm glad we helped get them together. Yeah, so am I. I don't even regret my sore jaw. Oh. Let me see what I can do for it, George. Come here. Huh? Closer. Oh. Better? Ah, what better? I think it just shows... If those two could find happiness after all those years, well, anyone can. After all those years. Yeah, I think I've learned something from those two, Susan. You have, George? Mm. What have you learned? Tell me. Well, why rush into anything? Oh, George! <laughs> Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Wendell Niles inviting you to join us then. <laughs>